Hello and welcome, or merhaba, to this brief history of Turkey, when we're going to look at 40,000 years of history in about a thousand words, or just under six minutes. The recorded history of the country we call Turkey stretches back at least 40,000 years. The majority, Asian portion of the country, is very fertile. As a result, this part of Turkey, called Anatolia, was one of the first places on earth to develop agriculture and, as such, is one of the cradles of human civilization. In Europe, modern Turkey shares borders with Greece and Bulgaria. In the Caucasus region, with the Eurasian countries of Georgia and Armenia, and in Asia proper, with Syria, Iraq and Iran. Turkey's highest peak lies on its border with Iran, at nearly 17,000 feet, or more than 5,000 meters, Mount Ararat is known in the Judeo-Christian tradition as the place where Noah's Ark was said to have come to rest. As a result of its strategic transcontinental location, the country was fought over, conquered and ruled by a who's who of ancient civilizations. These included the Assyrians, the Persians, Greeks, Romans, numerous European crusaders, and finally, the native Anatolian Ottoman Empire. Of all the native-born sons of Anatolia, special mention must be made of the writer Herodotus. Born in the Greek city of Halicarnassus, modern-day Bodrum, Herodotus is rightly known as the father of history for his masterpiece and only book, The Histories. But returning to the Ottomans, the story of Turkey's most famous empire is incredibly rich. Starting in 1300, the rise and fall of the Ottoman Empire is a tale with conquest, culture, infighting and intrigue at its very heart. It is the story of a once insignificant Anatolian tribe rising to become one of the greatest empires the world has ever seen. A major power on three continents at once, Europe, Asia and Africa. The Ottoman Empire was a force to be reckoned with, militarily and culturally. And then, as with all empires, there followed the inevitable decline and fall. With its end written into the peace settlements following the First World War. Out of the ruins of an empire came the modern Republic of Turkey, an amazing achievement under the circumstances. It's no wonder that the man responsible for this rebirth of a nation, Mustafa Kamel, otherwise known as Ataturk, or father of the Turks, is revered throughout Turkey. But before the Republic of Turkey, let's return to the Ottomans. Each Ottoman Sultan has a story worth exploring in detail, but one gets a sense of their characters from the titles by which they're known. The Conqueror, the Warrior, the Thunderbolt, the Magnificent, the Lawgiver, the Godlike, the Affable, the Great and the Grim. The history of their capital and its changing names is the history of the country in miniature. First settled by the Greeks in 700 BC, they knew Istanbul as Byzantium. When Emperor Constantine rebuilt the city in 330 AD as the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire, it was officially named New Rome. Better known as Constantinople, it would remain the capital of Rome in the east for more than a thousand years. Then, in 1453, Constantinople fell to the Ottomans after a six-week siege and became the new capital of this growing Ottoman Empire. Although he became known as the Conqueror, Sultan Mehmed II saw himself as inheritor of the Roman Empire and called himself Kaiseri Rum, literally Caesar of Rome. The political system he founded would last for more than 450 years until the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. In the late 19th century, the Ottomans instituted a parliamentary system and other reforms, but these changes were too little too late to stave off disquiet among Turks who had seen Europe and wanted a more modern, freer nation. During the First World War, the Ottomans sided with Germany 
and fought against Allied forces at Gallipoli and against Arabs on the Arabian Peninsula in a guerrilla war made famous by the British officer come legend Lawrence of Arabia. Finally, on November 1st, 1922, after 623 years, the Ottoman era was consigned to history when a decree was signed abolishing the empire. Mehmed VI, the 36th and last Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, went into exile and the Republic of Turkey was born. At the same time, the nation's capital moved to Ankara and Ataturk, the man responsible for creating the modern Republic of Turkey, insisted that Constantinople now be known by its more familiar name, Istanbul. Ataturk's reputation remains monumental and reaches a near cult-like status for many people in Turkey. You can expect to see the great man's image in one form or another wherever you go. Variously portrayed as a warrior, civilian leader of the people and educator. The image of Ataturk as an educator is especially notable. Perhaps the most significant part of Ataturk's radical program of reforms and modernization in the 1920s was the switch that saw Turkish drop the Arabic alphabet and writing from right to left in favor of a European script written from left to right. And the father of the Turks can even be found in Washington DC. Istanbul remains the country's historical and cultural hub. Dating back to the Roman era, every visitor should visit the Hagia Sophia, a magnificent church of the old Eastern Catholic faith. When the Ottomans conquered Constantinople, it became a mosque. But since 1935, it has been Turkey's must-visit museum. But history is not all about museums. Another very important aspect of Turkish culture is its position as a trading nation, which includes the flavors imported from the four corners of the earth. Together, these have been blended to create one of the world's greatest cuisines. And if you don't want to shop for your own spices in one of Istanbul's famous markets, any Turkish restaurant will serve you a feast of local flavors. Make sure you try Imam Bailidi, a typically vegetarian dish of braised eggplant stuffed with onions, garlic and tomatoes, simmered in olive oil and served at room temperature. But be careful if you're vegetarian, it is sometimes served with beef. The dish is so delicious that its name literally means the Imam fainted. And once you've finished eating, see if you can make your waiter faint with the following Turkish expression, ban de pari yok, or I have no money. Enjoy Turkey and thank you, or teşekkür ederim.